What's up guys, Jace to see Same as him a name. What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and I recently set out on a challenge to challenge myself with 500 of my hard earned dollars to build a gaming tower that can play games here in 2018. $500 worth of build is actually not that hard these days. I mean, especially with the 2200G, I got eight gigabytes of DDR4 in here, but you know what actually made it a little bit challenging was I set out to also include this, a monitor and peripherals, and we did it at $493, I think. Eh, whatever. Links in the description below of all these parts. You guys can add it up for yourself. NordVPN has sponsored today's video, and right now they are offering my viewers 77% off a three year membership. And they are adding more servers across the world every single week. In fact, right now they are up to 4,048 servers in 62 countries, including the Middle East, Asia, Europe and the Americas. Now VPN stands for a virtual private network and that is important to all of us because it keeps people from being able to spy on our information. And NordVPN doesn't keep any logs. So there's no log whatsoever of what you are doing on the internet when connected to NordVPN. So start taking your internet privacy serious with NordVPN and save 77% off a three year membership by using offer code jace 2 cents at checkout. See the link in the description for more details. All right, so let's talk about the parts here real quick. As mentioned, this is an AMD based uh, Ryzen 2200G. This, it's really hard to deny the value of the new Ryzen APUs. They are pretty much around the same about a GT 1030 graphics card or like an RX 560. Um, they are not groundbreaking, but because we are pairing it with the Skepter 20 inch LED um, 1600 by 900 panel. This is not a 1080p and it's also not larger than 20 inches, but this is from the perspective of someone that's got very little money and nothing to reuse. I've always done these build guides with the assumption of like, you could use a TV or something to hook it up to, but that's not always the case. So we went with the 19 point, oh, it's like, it's like a 19.5 or something like that. They say 20 on there, but it's a 75 Hertz panel. So it's a 1600 by 900, which is in between a 720p and a 1080p. So we're actually gonna be offloading some of the pixel density, which is gonna make our 2200 perform a little bit better. You pair it up with a 1080p panel, then the 2200 starts to uh, feel, the, feel the hurt just a little bit. Now in terms of peripherals, this is great. This is actually RGB. It's got a crazy looking mouse. So it's a keyboard and mouse. It's not a mechanical keyboard, but it's suspension cap structured, lifelike mechanical keyboard feeling. Okay. Colorful mid plate and gorgeous breathing lamp. Render atmosphere with colorful backlight. I can't wait to render some atmospheres with that one. Uh, but the rest of the parts, like I said, 2200G, eight gigabytes of Patriot DDR4, 2400 megahertz memory. Now, the reason why I didn't go with faster memory, obviously our budget didn't allow, but I did a video and I'll do a pop out right here for you guys to go and check out where I did actually test memory speed with the overclocking of a 2400G and we found that it didn't have as big of an impact on Ryzen 2, especially the APUs, um, than it did on the first gen Ryzen general performance when you come to overclocking the memory. Now obviously the memory that we're using for system memory is what is shared with the APU. So we definitely wanted more memory and a decent speed. I'm sure this can overclock to at least 2600, maybe 2800. We'll be trying that out. Gigabyte A320M HD2. This is the motherboard I used in my past budget guide. It's really hard to deny its uh, solid build quality, inexpensive, but also has all the features that we need. It's just, if you're following this build guide, keep in mind, you might have to update the BIOS on this before uh, a Ryzen 2 chip or 2200G, 2400G, whatever. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, AMD does actually send out an update kit, which includes like a single core or whatever, blah, 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 PSU, that would allow you to update that, but that uh, obviously adds time. Now, why did I go with a 500 watt PSU? Well, because it's really easy to take something like a 1050 Ti later on and pair it with this system. Now we're not gonna be doing that today because this was obviously, this would obviously put our budget at more like $650, but I wanted to make sure we had enough PSU to add a discrete GPU later on. And 500 watt means that we can go all the way up to something like a 1070 Ti or a 1080 even. Not necessarily a 1080 Ti comfortably, but I wouldn't really pair a 1080 Ti with a 2200G anyway. That'd be a bit of an imbalance. But this PSU is actually pretty inexpensive. It's 80 plus and EVGA has been making great power supplies over the last couple of years. It's a brand I trust. And so it's one of the reasons why it is in our build. Also, there's no SSD in this build. You guys know I love to use SSDs, but I couldn't give us a decent amount of storage and maintain 
uh, below the $500 price point. If we weren't buying a monitor and keyboard and stuff, then we would have been able to, but instead I'm using a, a barricade, a barricade, Seagate Barracuda, a Barracuda. It's a one terabyte Seagate. It's a hard drive and it's one terabyte. So it'll hold our games and our OS and stuff. And again, um, the only thing that's gonna really suffer with that is the overall load speeds. If you've gotten used to an SSD, then this would obviously hurt. If you don't have a PC, then what hurts is the fact that you can't load anything anyway. So who cares if it takes a little bit longer? Now for the case, I did not spend a lot of money. This is the Rosewheel Challenger S. Now admittedly, I could have found a cheaper case, but what I liked about this is I believe the internals are black. I could be wrong, it might just be bare steel but it has intake fans and exhaust. The problem is when you, ch when you shop for a very cheap chassis or case, uh, the way they actually reduce the cost is they don't include fans in many instances or a single exhaust fan. This one, according to the pictures anyway, looked like it had intake fans. It might not, I don't know. I might've just eaten my words. We'll find out when we open it up. Otherwise, um, this should still provide adequate cooling. It has side vents, intake vents, obviously, and exhaust vents. So if I have to add a couple of $2 fans to this, I will. Let's build it. Montage time. So here it is, a pretty basic tower, no frills. In fact, uh, I was happy that it is a black interior and it does have two blue LED intake fans like I was hoping. Um, unfortunately, they source the cheapest cables they possibly could, blue USB 3.0 even, and beige HD, <laughs> HD audio cables. Can't get any more basic than that. Um, the case was 49 bucks. And there's gonna be some people out there that are like, this was the wrong case for that. You should have gotten this case. And that's the best part about these guides is you can take that money and allocate it towards whatever you want. So if you think it should have been a different case and you're following this sort of a build guide, then do that, buy a different case. But I felt that this was a good case for the price because of the fact we get three fans, including LED fans. Once I started shopping cheaper cases, trust me, I looked, the intake fans were non-existent, which means we would have had to have bought extra fans to keep the temperatures inside down, which can affect the APU performance. So I felt like this was a good trade-off. And they even gave us a bio speaker. That is freaking awesome because most people don't have bio speakers anymore and the case manufacturer provided that. So Rosewell included that, which is nice because now we can troubleshoot with BIOS beeps. I don't know how many people don't realize that's a thing because it hasn't been a thing in a long time. But what we have to do now is see whether or not the uh, BIOS on this motherboard is gonna support the 2200G out of the box or if we have to update it. So which means we obviously have to hook up our monitor and stuff so that we can get into the OS. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we are up and running after a bajillion updates. Here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna play a couple of games I've got installed. We're gonna start with Friday the 13th. Really fun game. I used to actually live stream this quite a bit. Um, unfortunately, it's a game under legal battle now. So who knows what the future is on that. But let's go to the settings and video settings. We're gonna make this realistic, right? So we're 1600 by 900, full screen windowed. No, we want full screen. There we go. No vertical sync, overall quality. Let's put this to medium. I think at 1600 by 900, we should be able to do medium. That should, I mean, whoa. Uh, that's not supposed to happen. So obviously we're having some sort of issue here with our video. Uh, it's not overclocked or anything. I mean, I have a slight overclock on the memory, but that was passing some of my other tests fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and reset defaults. If it still does this, I'm gonna try reinstalling the driver. If it still does it in 3D mode, then chances are we have a bad CPU. Okay, so here's the CPU I already had. We're starting to think now, the problem is persisting no matter what we do. So we're starting to think that it might very well be a bad CPU. So the only way to rule that out now is to take out the one that I bought from Amazon and put in the one that I already had, which I know works just fine and see if the problem persists. All right, let me shut down this Windows Defender because the only thing it defends is your performance. It takes it away. It's actually a noticeable improvement when you disable that on a low-end CPU. So maybe we'll make a video about that, but we're gonna finish this video, damn it, because we've got things to do. Um, let's see if that fixed anything. So we're gonna go back to, we'll try Counter-Strike because that one was a guaranteed not gonna work. Every single time it loaded up, 
it did that. So let's, I, I swapped the CPU, as you guys saw, and uh, we're gonna see if this is gonna work now. Oh, so something else is clearly happening here. Monitor maybe? Well, it's doing it again on the screen. This is what happens when we go full screen. Um, we tested the adapter and the cable. Like I said, it's not that, but check this out. This is the weird part. Are you ready for this? Watch this. So if I adjust the volume, which brings up this little overlay for volume, it's fine. It's when it goes back to the focused window that this happens. Now this only happens in full screen, not in windowed mode. All right, so we stole the small HD monitor off of the camera that Phil is using. And as you can see, we're getting the same exact result. We switched the CPU, same result. This obviously re replaced the monitor. We also tried different cables, different HDMI cable, as well as a DVI cable. And it's a DVI to HDMI. And we're getting the same result in a different output on the motherboard. So the common thread in all of this is the motherboard. So unfortunately, that's where this video has to end because my journey to build the ultimate gaming rig for under 500 bucks, including a monitor, keyboard, and mouse is um, completely just blocked now by a bad motherboard. So uh, I guess I get to go through the RMA process and get a new one. So we will do a part two of this video, guys. Trust me, we have been at this all damn day, all day. Every minute of this day has been dedicated to this video and unfortunately I'm really upset that I can't give you guys a conclusion now. I mean, I can tell you this, if you wanna know how the video or how it was gonna perform, go and check out my review of the 2200G. In fact, I'll put it up right here for you guys to go and check it out. Uh, that's exactly how it was gonna perform, no surprise there. But the challenge here was seeing if we could build the entire setup minus the OS because you don't actually need a new CD key to reinstall it. I'm not gonna tell you guys how, but you can actually reinstall Windows if it's been activated before. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> this sucks. This really sucks. So I, I tried, I tried guys. And uh, now I'm out some money. So hopefully I can get this all fixed. Thanks for watching guys. Hit that like button if you appreciate the effort. Um, click the bell. I don't think it matters anyway. Just come back if you guys like the content. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I'm really kind of flustered now because I'm, I'm mad. I'm really mad. I'm as mad as Paul's hardware. If it doesn't show on my face, I don't know how else to express it. Clearly I am smitten with rage.